Hey tennis fans, I'm Grace Carter and this is Tennis Now presented by Tennis Express. Tennis Express, order today and it ships today. The end of Wimbledon week one brought us the end of an era. Former world number five, Daniela Hontakova is retiring. The 34-year-old Slovak won 570 career matches, seven singles titles, including a couple at Indian Wells, and she earned more than $10 million in prize money during a successful career that began in 1999. Daniela also completed the career Grand Slam in mixed doubles and reached the 2008 Australian Open semifinals in singles, falling to Anna Ivanovic in three sets. One of the most popular and glamorous players on the tour, she says she's excited now to start a new chapter. And these days, she is a tennis TV analyst for Fox Sports Asia. She also models, and she's an avid golfer. And she has also founded and runs her own health food snack company called D1. Fellow players paid tribute to Daniela. In other news now, big changes at the U.S. Open this summer when Grand Slam tennis enters a new time zone. Looks like the U.S. Open plans to experiment with a shot clock this August, a much talked about 25 second shot clock between points. Currently, Grand Slams have a 20 second rule between points, while tour events have 25 seconds. The U.S. Open says the clock is gonna do a couple of things. Number one, speed up play and reduce toweling off and stalling between points. And number two, enforce a five-minute warm-up rule and a three-minute medical timeout rule. Now, some players and coaches have called for a shot clock for several years, including ESPN analyst Brad Gilbert, who told Tennis Now a shot clock is the number one rule change that he advocates. Also, in what could be a game changer, the U.S. Open will allow coaching during its qualifying tournament. And here's the twist. The Open will allow coaching at any time during a match, except for when the ball is in play. So that means coaches can coach from the player's box and talk to the players when they're on the same end of the court. And when players are on the opposite end of the court, coaches would be allowed to use hand signals, something a lot of them do anyway. The rule changes don't have the support of the other three Grand Slams at this point. This is just a trial by the U.S. Open. And important to note, none of these things will affect the main draw tournament. This is only for the qualifying event, the junior, senior, and wheelchair tournaments. There is some concern that the vocal New York City crowd may get involved counting down along with the shot clock, which is one of the reasons officials want to test it out first. The Open is going to give the chair umpire some discretion on this matter. He'll get to decide when to start the shot clock. So if the crowd is unusually rowdy, the chair umpires can wait for crowd noise to subside before they actually start that shot clock. Another interesting aspect of this Telegraph report is former WTA CEO Stacey Allister, who is now with the USTA, has been the driving force behind the changes, which makes sense because current WTA CEO Steve Simon wants to expand the on-court coaching rule to allow coaching from the stands. Tennis Now examined both sides of this debate just a few weeks back, so check out our news videos for more on that topic. Boredom, as it turns out, can be costly. Just ask Bernard Tomich, who has explained his lack of effort in his first round loss at Wimbledon, saying he was bored. Well, that didn't go over well with the ITF, which hit Tomich with a $15,000 fine. Seems Head didn't like it much either, so Bernie's racket sponsor dropped him. Head says it's extremely disappointed in Bernie's attitude. It doesn't represent their company at all. His fine from the ITF, though, was also because he called for a trainer and then later admitted he wasn't actually injured. So that $15,000 is going to be deducted from his Wimbledon prize money. And here's the kicker. Bernie says he's going to appeal that decision because he thinks it's not fair. Well, Novak Djokovic, also a head endorser, sometimes practices with Tomic. He says Head was right to drop Bernie because his actions just don't send a good message to the kids. But he also says that Bernie's going through a rough patch right now and needs a little support. And did you hear about this one? Daniel Medvedev hit with a $14,500 fine for tossing coins at the chair umpire after he lost a match. He did apologize later and he called his actions a stupid thing to do. Wonder if he thinks his fine is fair. And finally, we all know Roger Federer is beloved in the tennis world, but one male fan took his devotion to a whole new level, shouting out a marriage proposal during Roger's opening round win. 
<laughs> yep, everybody got a laugh out of that one. That's our news for now. I'm Grace Carter. See you next time here on Tennis Now.